Hi everyone, this is Mike89. Welcome to the final video of my Sonic 3 and Knuckles tutorial series. Uh, this video is going to cover Death Egg. Death Egg is a fairly simple, fairly simple stage. Um, no fancy glitches, although it does have probably the most difficult boss in the game. Uh, so we start by spin dashing, grabbing this zip line, and from about somewhere in between these last two rings here, we're going to jump and we're going to insta shield right as we get near this enemy and that's going to get us through it no problems uh, hold right that will get, get you over that gap wait until you're actually standing next to this box here before you jump to collect it because if you jump too early then you'll carry your momentum over here and you'll fall into the pit you don't want to go that way only tails can go that way so uh, and again with the lightning shield here, you need to hold off just a little bit because you can't you can't use the lightning jump until the shield actually appears. So make sure that you either wait till you see the lightning shield around you or you hear the sound uh, before you try and jump up here. Otherwise, you'll just into the shield and look a bit silly. Uh, here, this is just the kind of funny sprite thing. Uh, what I want you to do right now is keep an eye on this torpedo firer here. Uh, as soon as you can see the very top of it, so about now, this is when you want to switch over to moving to the left. So you'll see that pretty much straight away after this, I now switch over to holding left. And it also means that from here, I can ju double jump up to here, and it's just at the right height for me. Uh, these are simple enough. You can only move left and right in these. So around about here, you want to switch to holding right so that you make your way neatly around this corner. Just like that. Um... This is a bit of a trick. These uh, lightning bolts here, even though you have the lightning shield on, they can actually hurt you. So anytime I'm on one of these, or one of them that shoots lightning bolts, because some of them don't, uh, you'll see me jump over them like that. So there's no risk of getting hit. And so here you'll see it again. Uh, here on the okay, so after this zip line, uh, just as you go through the red door, that's when you want to switch to holding left. And if you time it right, then again you'll go neatly around that corner. But if it looks like you're going to miss, you might have noticed I was able to do a jump in there. If you press the jump buttons while you're around the outside of the of this tube, uh, then it will actually push you out towards the outside of the tube. So if you keep mashing jump along here, you can actually keep yourself going along the outside of the tube like that. Um, it's not recommended to do that all the time, just to try and correct yourself in a situation like that. Uh, here you're going to you're going to jump twice, once when you see that one fire, and the second time when you see this one fire. Uh, property of these is that any time that you land on them again, they will change the direction that they're running in. So any time you see me jump, you should be jumping and be prepared for the direction change. If you don't see me jump, then don't jump, because otherwise you're just confusing yourself. Yeah, moving on. Here there's another one of those um, sections, but there's no lightning bolts on that one, so you're safe to run along it. Now, this section. Uh, here you can only move up and down. So, just go through the first one and you'll hit that top switch every time. Uh, as you're approaching it there, move slightly up and you'll hit the middle switch. Let go of everything again and slightly touch down on the way down this time and you'll hit the bottom switch. Now we're going to move up and line ourselves up with this bumper here 
So try and make it so the top of Sonic Sprite is near. Oh, that's a bad angle. Near the top of the bumper, like that. And then as you go past it, you want to go up again so that you hit that orange spring. But just a little bit of it. This is okay. So this is probably the hardest part of getting this really fast. You can just use the blue bumpers that are further over here, but it's a little bit slower. Um, so you want to hit the orange spring. As you hit it, switch to down so that you hit the top switch. As you hit the top switch, back to up, and then as you hit the orange spring, back to down again. So it's up, down, up, down quite quickly, and that should get you the top and the middle switch. And then this one, you have enough time to line up. You can actually see it. So that's quite nice. Then you want to hit the bottom switch and then kind of line yourself up with the middle, as close as you can to the middle of the exit tube. Um, I've actually died here before because there's a door that closes behind you here. And I, th I think I was right at the top and the door closed on me and killed me. It is a thing that can happen. So, you you need to be prepared for all sorts of things. Um, here, you just need to hold right. Again, you can use the jumps uh, to keep yourself up the top here if you feel it's necessary. Sometimes you can hold right and just be stuck on this wall. So, using jumps there can be nice. Um, this is a bit strange. This door here can also kill you. If you roll anywhere from about here to here, um, then this door will kill you. So don't do it. You see I do a roll at the end there. That's just to stop myself from landing on this platform. I don't know if it's actually faster or not. Uh, this is the only one of the light tubes you actually have to use in the entire stage. Um... That little jump there is just so that you jump over the trigger for another one. Um, unless you really feel like spending 10 to 15 seconds in the light tubes, I recommend doing that jump. Uh, that, that double jump there seems superfluous, but the idea behind it is that it gives you your air control back. So, I'm going to uh, start holding left there so that I land directly on that zip line, which is about two thirds of the way to the right in that chute. So that's kind of the line you want to be aiming yourself up on. Okay, now the boss fight. With a lightning shield, this boss fight is actually really fun. Um, so see the, the checkerboard in the background here. Um, we need to wait a little bit for the orbs to disappear. But what we're going to try and do... Uh, you can time it better than this, obviously, but... It's probably not uh, advised to try and go too early. Because you want, you want the orbs to be on the ground when they start exploding. To get, so that you have the most time to respond to where they are. But the reason I've kept the two yellow lines up there is because that's roughly where you want to do your double jump from. Pretty much in perfect line with that second set of checkerboard on the screen. And then what you want to do is try and line it up so that You've got no momentum left or right when you land on the boss. And that will mean that you just bounce up and down, up and down, and up and down. Uh, you also need to make sure that you're descending as you go for the first hit. If you're ascending, then your bounce will go straight down and into all the orbs. So this is roughly what the fight looks like if it's done really well. Uh, now, there's an element of luck to this as well. You don't know exactly where the orbs are going to come out. But, 
you have enough time that you can react to whatever gets thrown at you. So I could see, for example, that there were two coming, two spikes coming just kind of through the left half of the boss's eye there, and so I knew to stay on the right. And when you're, if you are on the right hand side and you need to move to the left, you don't want to start moving until after you've gotten a hit. Just after you've gotten a hit is the best time to start moving. If you try and move just before you've gotten a hit, you'll still be moving downwards and then your momentum will be reversed when you get the hit. So it'll push you back out to the right and it'll make it harder to move left. So in the ideal case, this happens and you've got enough room here to fall and you'll actually keep the shield. Most of the time you'll lose the shield after the 8th hit. And if that happens, then you just want to stand on the ground and get into the shield hits all day. Um, here what we're going to do is something a little bit different. So as the boss becomes vulnerable again, uh, and that is at this point here, once the two platforms are all the way out, that's when this boss becomes vulnerable. And then, as you can see the very bottom of the, um, of the boss's sprite is about there. So as Sonic gets to about here, uh, when when I come down from this hit, I'm going to insta shield so that I am now bouncing on him again. Okay, now there's a there's a uh, formula to this. So if you are on the left hand side of this line through the center of the boss's eye. No, it's not quite the center, but you get what I get what I mean. If you're on this side, then the boss rotates the platforms anti-clockwise. If you're on the right side, then the platforms rotate clockwise. Now, what you actually want to happen is you want to be moving constantly between the left and right hand sides. And what that'll do is it'll confuse it so much because what's happening is, if, okay, so say it's moving slowly clockwise. If you go on the left hand side, it'll start accelerating in that direction or it'll start decelerating in the clockwise direction. So, you're, um, so it's not going to immediately start turning the other way. It's going to slow itself down, stop, and then go the other way. So if you can get it near that stopping point and then switch direction and then get near that stopping point and then switch direction, the platforms will essentially be locked in their current positions. And what that means is that you can continue bouncing on this boss for all eight hits. Um, that didn't work for me very well here. I think I only got three. But once you get, no once you get knocked out like that, You've got a ton of rings, and you have the insta shield, so you should just continue getting insta shield hits like this until the boss is dead. Uh, so there are a number of ways that boss can go bad. You can lose the lightning shield early, uh, you can lose a bunch of rings. Uh, one general principle, if the boss doesn't go as well as you want, because dying there costs over a minute because the previous checkpoint is back, way back in the middle of the stage. So it's very important that you don't die, even if it goes bad. So the one principle I will suggest is use your invincibility time wisely. So depending on where your rings are at, sometimes that means going all out for hits and sometimes it means prioritizing the rings. So if you've got one or two rings left and you have less than six hits on that form of the boss, I'd be going for rings first before I'd start going for hits. 
Uh, the other important thing in that regard, if you only have one ring, it will always get thrown out to the left. So, you want to make sure that you're getting knocked left as well. And normally that means standing on the left side of the boss. Um, in this case, it's a bit complicated because you have spikes that are constantly moving. But generally speaking, if you're on the left side of the boss, you're going to get knocked left more than you're going to get knocked right. And once you get that ring, you can then continue getting hits again. <clears throat> Uh, this first spin dash here, you actually want to delay a little bit. So I do three sweeps of the buttons instead of just two. And the reason for that is that you can see that the screen isn't panning across as quickly as it does in other places. Um, if you do a normal two sweep spin dash, you'll actually get stopped at some point down this ramp. I've actually had it where I get stopped right here. And then the enemy with the spike gladly kills you. Uh, similar to the start of Act 1, you also want to use the Insta Shield as soon as you get within range of that enemy. Uh, so here there's a couple of things you can do. Um, ideally, you want this Lightning Shield. But if you don't get it, when you spin dash down into here, and you have a direction to pick, if you press down, that will take you straight to another lightning shield. So if you miss the lightning shield up top, you can get another one there. Uh, here you want to go right. The left path is much, much slower. Um, it looks like it would be a good idea to release this spin dash earlier, but you want to wait until this platform gets all the way down here. So that you can jump off this platform and over the top of that enemy. It is very, very important that you keep the lightning shield for most of this stage. It'll cost you 15 seconds if you if you lose it. And not just in one place, it'll cost it all over the shop. Um, here there's a tunnel that leads to 30 rings out this way. Um, you don't want to go all the way and get the rings, but you want to make sure that you get this set of platforms well and truly off the screen. they're far enough off the screen like that and you hold left and then spin dash back the other way then they'll be back in their original position and that gives you time to spin dash and then spin dash back the other way um, as you go off the platform you want to make sure at some point between here and here that you tap left and that'll mean that when you land on the platform here, you're ready to spin dash immediately. Not getting off a spin dash there is bad for two reasons. Firstly, you won't get through um, this gap quickly enough. But secondly, and more importantly, with that one right there, you can end up right in front of that torpedo as it's firing. And that will again cost you a lightning shield. Uh, this next spin dash here, uh, you can see there's one of the temporary platforms here. Does not matter if it's on, doesn't matter if you think it's going to be on, uh, jump over it. The reason is, in the corner of the pit here, is a water shield. If you, if at any point in that stretch, the platform breaks, you will fall on the water shield. There isn't enough time to push yourself over to the 10 ring box that's next to it. And even though the water shield does get you extra height, you're still losing a good deal of time. Thankfully, this stage is fairly straightforward because there's only the one path for most of it. Once you press right at the start, there is one path and you are following it. Uh, this is kind of funny though. Um, you can push alongside these spikes all you want and they won't hurt you. Um, sideways spikes have no effect if gravity is reversed, which is really silly, but is true. 
Um, so I actually use it to time something there. So I pushed against them, bounced off once, then bounced off a second time, and then switched to holding left. And that, again, like in Act 1, gets me up here at exactly the right time. Uh, here, this is a little bit tricky with this platform. Um, you can, if you wait as late as possible, jump from the very end there and make it very small, you can get underneath this set of spikes, but I don't recommend it. It's very risky and costs you a shield if you screw it up. What I prefer to do instead is just slow myself down a little bit and try and land on this platform and then jump over to the other side. A bit like that. Uh, so here, that's a two-tap spin dash, so that'll get you enough speed uh, to jump and take out that enemy before it throws its um, spike at you, but it also means that you'll have enough speed to A, clear this corner, but B, not enough speed that you won't run into the star enemy that's about to appear here. Like that. And then you just run underneath them. Um, lightning jump up to here. Uh, keep your eye on the torpedo here. As soon as you see it fire, double jump over to the right hand side. Doesn't matter if you land on the second last or the last platform. You can make this jump from either of them. Um, and then you just double jump up there. That looks close, but you'll always beat it. Spin dash from here, double jump, stop there, spin dash. Uh, that conveyor belt was going back to the left, so you want to you want to jump off it as soon as you go past the star. That left spin dash again. Uh, make sure when you go up to this platform that you go past where the door is, because uh, this door again can crush you. So you want to get well out of its way, stop here and face left. As soon as you hear this spring platform come out, hold right. And you should catch the edge of that spring and the edge of this one. Uh, the game actually wants you to use another spring on the left hand side. So if you don't feel confident with it, you can use that extra spring. It'll only cost a second. Spin dash from here, jump out of the ramp. Use the lightning shield if you have to. Uh, use that to stop yourself. Spin dash and jump over this again. That's like 10 seconds of the light tubes. Um, these, even though there's only one path, you have to press down, you have to press left. This one, as soon as it opens up. This one you want to let go as soon as it opens up, so that's when the platform gets to about there. And if you do it just right, then you'll clear the trigger, which is about here, so you can see how close it is. You'll clear the trigger for that um, light tunnel. Which again, you don't want to hit. Uh, you want to stop on this platform because it moves up the fastest. So be standing on the far right platform, and as it moves to about one tile above where it started, that's about where it started, um, you can then double jump up to there. Uh, wait for this enemy to turn around before you release a spin dash. Do a full spin dash and then double jump into the ceiling after you kill the enemy and that'll let you keep most of your speed. Uh, a couple more spin dashes and we're in the boss room. Okay, so there you actually have to do that. You have to move out to the left and then back into the right otherwise the teleporter won't go off again. Now this fight is very simple. Now all you gotta do is Face the middle with your spin dash, 
and just let it go as soon as the spike car lands on the ceiling. So that's simple enough. There is there is one thing that can happen on the entry to the final phase of this of this boss. So you're gonna see me charge a spin dash. Do not let it go until the screen has panned all the way across. There's a thing with doing a spin dash too close to this um with doing a spin dash too close to this loading zone. That as you come through here, the screen will just randomly, violently pan off to the right. And then back to Sonic. If that happens, you're in big trouble. Because what's about to happen is the ground actually becomes, like, the ground tiles become offset from where the ground actually is. Kind of like that. And what it means is when you get to the right edge of the screen, there's a gap, depending on uh, like it, depending on how you go. It can it can be say this big. It can be big enough to fit Sonic is basically what I'm saying. And when you do the spin dash out to the right to start off here, you will fall through the last plat the last platform and you'll die. Now you can do the fight without any rings, but it's obviously not ideal. So, there's my word of warning. So now we carry on to the right and we move back to the left where the screen locks. And now you'll see, you'll see the screen kind of shake whenever Robotnik moves here. Now he does this seven times. That one there, where the right hand starts moving, is the fifth one. Uh, you want to stay to the left until you can see there, just as the sixth shake happens, the left hand appear. Once you see that, you're then safe to move into the middle, which is roughly between the third and fourth tiles on the ground. Uh, for number seven. And after number seven, He'll drop both hands down. Uh, you should do this spin dash facing right. Charge as much of a spin dash as you can, and you'll get those hits. Uh, now you want to move over to the left. Again, set up in the middle, this time facing left. Do that same spin dash. Again, get in the middle, face left, and on the last one, face right. Okay, not far to go now. Now, um, as the second phase of the boss rises up, these platforms start dropping away. The first three drop away. So stand roughly on the roughly on the fifth one, uh, and watch as the third one disappears off the screen entirely. Jump up at this. That will open up the boss and make it vulnerable. And so now I get one, two, this time, after two, jump over it. Uh, holding left the whole time, because this boss will push you away in a kind of odd way like that. I'm holding left the whole time there. Um, and then you want to get one more before it closes up. Now continue to hold left. And run underneath the, the fire like that. Once you get to here, switch to right. Jump into the nose like that, and as you hit the nose, switch back to left, so that you bounce into the the weak spot for hit six. It looks risky, but it's not. As long as you know what you're doing. Now, if you really want to be fancy, once the explosion sound goes away and you just hear the rumbling, you can then do a full-size jump into the pit, and Robotnik will appear about here. Let's see how close I was. Oh, pretty good. Uh, so that's when it's safe to do a full-size jump into the pit. You can get a number of hits 
here before he starts moving off to the right. You can get five, and then you have to lightning shield back up. Um, this doesn't actually matter, because as you can see, the time has already stopped. But it does end the game just a little bit faster. And that is how you speedrun Death Egg. So let's go back to the start and play without any interruptions. Yeah. 